As you get closer and closer to completing your game, you're going to be wanting to put in some final touches. So I'm going to show you today how to add checkpoint functionality to one of your games. So I'm working with my model platformer style game and what I really want is to honor the player's progress. So in other words, if the person playing the game gets far enough in the game, I want to respect that and instead of always starting them at the beginning whenever they're unsuccessful, I want to implement checkpoints so that they can start at the next checkpoint. So I'm going to show you how I normally do that in Construct 2. Um, now obviously this applies to the specific game that I'm working on, but the same concepts and techniques can be applied to almost anything. The first thing that I normally do is I add myself a new object type and I call it checkpoint. I make this really kind of an invisible sprite. Um, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to give it some color, um, but obviously you can take the color off afterwards. But when testing, this is the kind of thing that's really helpful to have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create checkpoints in my game. So for example, this is where I'm going to want my first checkpoint. And then this is where I'm going to want my second checkpoint. And then when they hit the exit sign, that's the end of the game. One of the things we're going to want to do is go to our checkpoint and we're going to add an instance variable. And it's going to be called checkpoint. And so what this is, is the checkpoint for the invisible sprite. What we're going to do throughout the game is we're going to check um, the checkpoint on each individual checkpoint and all of these different collectibles are going to be associated and have the same checkpoint number as the checkpoint itself. So that when the player collides with the checkpoint, we're going to see whether there's anything left that has that checkpoint. If there is, then they're not going to be able to restart at this checkpoint. It'll, it'll make itself pretty clear here in a second. So what normally happens is once we put that checkpoint instance variable on there, we want to give each checkpoint like a number. We start with zero, so this is going to be checkpoint one, okay? And this is going to be checkpoint two. All right. In my game, all I really have are coins, but if you have a game where there's different types of collectibles, you probably want to create a family and group them all together um, inside your code. But just for the basic example of how to put in a rudimentary checkpoint, we're going to go with these coins. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my coins. This is the only thing the player really collects. And I'm going to add an instance variable to them as well. And it's going to be called checkpoint. And that's going to be the checkpoint for the coin. Whatever. All right. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say all of the coins that are before this checkpoint, they're going to get the same number as the invisible sprite. So I'm going to go to all my coins that are before that checkpoint. And I'm going to make them checkpoint one, checkpoint one, checkpoint one, checkpoint one, checkpoint one, checkpoint one, so forth and so on. And then for my next set, all of these ones are going to have the checkpoint two. Two, 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 because that's going to match the checkpoint on my invisible sprite. These guys over here, I'm just going to give them a number greater than. These are going to be my threes. There won't be a checkpoint for these guys, but the number of their checkpoint instance variable has to be bigger so it doesn't get caught in my logic. All right, cool. So that's sort of the way that I would um, set up the layout before going in and doing any coding. So I have an event sheet that I use in my multi-level games, and I normally call it something like start and end level event sheet. These are the events and actions that all of the um, levels have in common. Things like scoring and determining what the next level is, um, collectibles or coins left. I have a start of level event group, I have an end of level event group. I'm gonna create a new event group in here and I'm gonna call it checkpoints. So this is basically going to be the events and actions that are related to checkpoint functionality. And the reason why I'm putting it in this start and end level event sheet is because this is an event sheet that I include in every single levels event sheet. So this is gonna be universal functionality. When the player collides with the checkpoint, I need to see whether there's any items that are left that the player did not collect. 
In order to do this, I'm going to use a local variable and I'm going to call it items left. I love short yet meaningful variable names. This is going to be number of items left for the current checkpoint. Awesome. So whenever the player collides with the checkpoint, I need to basically find any coins that are left. If there's no coins left, then great. They get the checkpoint. They've earned that checkpoint. If there's coins left, then they didn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a sub event and I'm going to go under system and I'm going to pick coins by comparison. So the object that I want to pick are all coins and I want to compare their checkpoint instance value to see whether it's less than or equal to the checkpoint in um, checkpoint instance value. So basically what happens is I'm going out finding all the coins and then I'm looking at the checkpoint instance variable of each coin and comparing it to the checkpoint value of the checkpoint the player just collided with. If I find any coins that are less than or equal to that number, then I know that the player did not collect all the coins. So what I'm going to do is using that local variable and set its value to however many coins were found during that pick. So construct two is an interesting system. It's almost like um, a bunch of filters. So what happens is I'm saying, hey, go out and find all the coins, filter them, see whether um, there's any coins that have a checkpoint value that's less than or equal to the checkpoint that was just um, collided with, and then set this items left variable to however many you find. And then really the only thing I have to do is add another sub event. And in this case, I just want to see whether items left is equal to zero. If items left is equal to zero, then that means that the player has collected all the collectibles before the checkpoint and they should be able to um, earn that checkpoint. I'm going to need a global variable, however, to track this. At the very beginning of the game, I need to know that the player has earned no checkpoints. So at the very beginning of the game, checkpoint is going to be zero. If for some reason the player collides with the checkpoint and they've collected all the coins, in other words, if items left to collect are zero, we're going to go ahead and we are going to set the value of checkpoint to whatever the instance variable value for checkpoint is for that invisible sprite they just collided with. So before we go much further, let's go ahead and let's debug this. So what you're going to see, you're going to find global variable checkpoint is zero. And if I go through the game and I collect coins, let's say I don't collect all the coins before the checkpoint, but I collide with it see how checkpoint is still zero now if I go above the castle and I grab these other two coins and then I go to my checkpoint then I should see that checkpoint has been set to one so everything's working exactly how we want it to our next step is to change some of the start of level functionality. What we want to be able to do is if the player has earned a checkpoint, we don't want to position the player at the beginning of the layout. We want to position them at where that checkpoint, the last checkpoint they've earned was. So we want to position the player. So what we're going to do is on start of layout, we are going to add a sub event. And what we're looking for is anytime the checkpoint is greater than zero. So if you just played the game for the first time or you just restarted it, your checkpoint's going to be zero. But if your checkpoint's greater than zero, then we should be able to position the player um, to the last checkpoint that they collected. What we're going to do is we are going to add another condition and we are going to choose the checkpoint and we're going to compare the instance variable. We want to pick the checkpoint that is equal to the global val variable checkpoint. 
So for example, let's say um, you hit a barnacle and you blow up. When it goes to restart the layout, it's going to notice that you earned checkpoint one. And it's going to pick the checkpoint object instance whose instance variable is the value of the global variable. So in this case it would be one. And then we can use that checkpoint to position our player. So we're going to take the player and we are going to find a way to position to object. We're going to position the player to the checkpoint object, the one that we filtered here. We found the checkpoint on the layout whose checkpoint instance variable is equal to the global variable checkpoint, which is the last checkpoint that was earned. So if we go back and once again, take a look at your global variables, checkpoint is zero, tells you how many coins are left. Bam, bam, collect coins, collect coins, collect coins, collide with the checkpoint without collecting all the coins associated with it and checkpoint does not change. If I go up here, bam, collect the final two coins, come back down, and now collide, boom, I earned checkpoint one. So the cool thing now is with the code we put in place, if for some reason now I falter, when the game restarts, it's gonna position me right at the checkpoint, the last one I earned. The thing you probably are gonna notice, however, is what about all these coins over here? We need to put something in our code that goes back and destroys any of those coins that were associated with the checkpoint that I already earned. So that's what we're gonna do next. Okay, okay, okay. How are we going to delete those coins? So we've got this sub event um, when the uh, level starts. It checks to see whether check any checkpoints have been earned and it picks the checkpoint that um, the last checkpoint earned and positions the player. Now all we really have to do is add a sub event to this. When we add a sub event to this, what we really wanna do is we wanna find any coins whose checkpoint instance variable is less than or equal to the last checkpoint earned. So that's our global variable right there. What we're gonna do is for any of the coins on the layout that are less than the last checkpoint earned, we're just gonna destroy them. Real simple coin destroy. It's just gonna get rid of them. So now, we debug our layout and I go in earn all my coins come back over hit that did I earn my checkpoint? Yes, I did. Now all I have to do is go on a suicide mission. Ah, now it should bring me back at checkpoint one, the one I earned, and all of the coins before it are now gone. The only problem is now, now it says I still have 15 coins left, so I have to fix that. The best way to handle things like the um, coins left issue is just to change when you do things. I'm gonna add an event another on startup layout event. At first it's gonna put it at the bottom, this event sheet, I'm gonna bring it up into here. Remember, Construct2 still does events in order. So normally what would happen is, in my game at least, I would set the coins left global variable to the number of coins on the layout. But now I've got situations where I might be destroying those coins. So what I'm gonna do is, the last thing that happens in my startup layout is going to be another on start of layout event with one action to set the coins left to coin.count, however many coins are remaining, whether I have um, deleted them because I earned a checkpoint or not. And that should be pretty easy to determine. I go in, very quickly get my coins, make sure I get all of them, come down, collide with my checkpoint, make sure I've earned my checkpoint, I have, and then all I have to do, go on a suicide mission, it should start me back at this checkpoint, 
It should have deleted all the coins beforehand, and then it should tell me how many coins I have left. And I have seven. I'm going to go ahead and check this second checkpoint. If I collect all the coins for it, and I earn the checkpoint, and then I go on a suicide mission, it's going to bring me back at checkpoint two. But unfortunately, it says coins left are three. There we go. That's perfect. And there are three left. Bam. And there I go. Okay. There's only one last thing to do. I have a game over layout, which basically is if you beat the game. And it has an associated event sheet. Normally what happens when the game's over, there's certain things you need to do. You need to reset the score to zero, um, change what the first layout is, in my case, level one. And then I just have to do one more thing, which is to set the value of the checkpoint to zero. So that when we go to level one, it starts me at the very beginning. So there I am, it starts me at the beginning. If I were to beat the game, which I should be able to easily do, except for when people are watching or I'm recording myself. So if I go and I get all the coins, Go. You should tell me I beat the game. Said checkpoint two. When I came back in, I reset it to one. So that's how to add checkpoint functionality to your game. I know it's kind of uh, tedious, but definitely well worth it. Will motivate people to continue playing your game.